They may cook, they may even clean, but they definitely keep the television home fires burning. Your chair's on fire! Oh. Why? You keep smoking like that, you're gonna have to be fitted for a smog device. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV housekeepers. Sorry about the dirty dishes on the coffee table, Mr. Finley, but some people don't let nobody get their work done. <laughs> for this list, we're not limiting our choices to only those household employees who keep the homes clean. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. Anyone who's employed in a domestic role in the home is eligible. Oh! Well, you should always read the label. You should always read it well. There will be no butlers on this list because we've already got a list of the top 10 butlers in film and TV. Number 10, Daphne Moon, Frasier. Oh, hello. Caught me with me hand in the biscuit tin. <laughs> I'm Daphne, Daphne Moon. This British beauty, who fancies herself a bit psychic, was hired by Dr. Fraser Crane as a sometimes housekeeper and always physical therapist for his elderly father, Martin. Because someone hasn't been smelling so fresh lately. Because someone is long overdue for a tub. However, during the series' run, in addition to helping Martin with his exercises, we've also seen Daphne cooking, mopping, and doing laundry, as well as various other household chores. Although her cooking skills apparently leave much to be desired. I've made <coughs> meatball sandwiches, pepperoni pizzas, and uh, little sausage rolls. Will you be needing anything else? The number of the nearest gastroenterologist. <laughs> but more than that, her role expands when she enters a romance with Fraser's smitten brother, Niles. Oh, oh my God! Now you see what you've done now! She's bound to find out! Oh, God! Oh, well, so you'll just write her a bigger, fatter check. No, Niles, she'll quit! And becomes like a member of the family. I'm not sure if it's jasmine or orange blossom. You know, a lot of times... Oh, for God's sake, Dr. Crane! Number nine, Mrs. Bentina Beakley, DuckTales. Jungle Duck, I will not tolerate such behavior. Now, why don't we try something quiet? Hired by the richest duck in the world, Scrooge McDuck, Mrs. Beakley joined his staff as a maid, cook, and nanny to his three troublesome but lovable nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Oh, how did I get here? And where is here? Let's see. With her, she brought her granddaughter, Webby Vanderquack, and she spends much of her time trying to keep the rambunctious kids from misbehaving. Uh, I'll go first. Uh, I'm probably not going to get much sleep anyway. Overly trusting, easily rattled, but in no way a dumb duck. Mrs. Beakley lives a quieter life than her adventurous boss, but she's as kind-hearted and dependable a duck as you're ever likely to meet. She's telling her Prince Greedrake story again. He was to be crowned king on his 25th birthday. <laughs> that would have been day after tomorrow. Number eight, Mrs. Felidia Featherbottom, Arrested Development. You're kicking me out? At the beginning of pilot season? You're not gonna make it as an actor, and we're not gonna make it as a couple. She takes care of the Bluth model home, but Mrs. Featherbottom is by no means a maid, or a woman, or even real. Oh, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Felidia Featherbottom, and I can cook, and I can clean, and I can take care of the little ones. She's just another persona invented by Tobias Funke to convince his wife he's got the acting chops to make it. I've no need for payment. <laughs> the love of the family is more than enough. I'm sorry, this is Mrs. Featherbottom. From Blackstool. Inspired by Mary Poppins and Mrs. Doubtfire, Mrs. Featherbottom lacks the smarts, charm, and warmth of her heroines, often accidentally resorting to inappropriate innuendos. Who'd like a banger in the mouth? Oh, right, I forgot. Here in the States, you call it a sausage in the mouth. Tobias may think otherwise, but his costume fools no one. The only reason they keep him on is because he's actually a great housekeeper. Go figure. We? Number seven, Berta, Two and a Half Men. Hi, Berta. It's me, the, uh, the scrubbing bubble. <laughs> I, I came to apologize. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. She's sassy, tough, and can handle anything. In short, 
Berta is the perfect housekeeper for jingle writer slash playboy slash high-functioning alcoholic Charlie Harper. It's a shame. You paying all that money for an ex-wife and an ex-wife's house and you're not allowed inside either one? Exactly. <laughs> While seeing one of Charlie's countless one-night stands wearing next to nothing at the breakfast table would render other people speechless, tough as nails Berta takes it in stride and is never slow on delivering the perfect one-liner. Boy, she smells good. Yeah, if you like camel filters and pheromones. <laughs> this ex-con is so beloved that she was even asked to stay on following Charlie's death. Mom lets me smoke. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? No reason I shouldn't trust the judgment of a woman who's off selling bootleg Metallica t-shirts in a monster truck rally. <laughs> Because, let's face it, this house would collapse without Berta keeping it all together. Berta, if you're gonna do a guy in the laundry room, put a scarf on the doorknob or something. Number six, Florence Johnston, The Jeffersons. Florence, I don't wanna see a movie like that. Why not? It's a love story. <laughs> Are you trying to get rid of me? Of course not. The first feature starts in five minutes. This feisty maid spends more time inventing zingers and comebacks than she does doing actual housework. Well, why didn't you quit? Couldn't afford to. But I did call her names under my breath and make faces behind her back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like I do to Mr. Jefferson, huh? <laughs> she basically lives to torment her boss, George Jefferson. So why don't they fire her? Well, she's, um... We're not really sure. You may have a job, but you certainly don't work. What's wrong? But it probably has to do with softy Wheezy, who considers Florence a member of the family. Florence? Oh, Miss Gerald! <laughs> However, it's Florence's sass and back and forths with George that really made her a fan favorite boosting her from a recurring role to a full-time part and eventually gave her her own very short-lived spin-off. Florence, am I glad to see you? Uh-oh, wrong apartment. <laughs> Number five, Mrs. Edna Garrett, Different Strokes and the Facts of Life. <laughs> what kind of animal is that? That's a cricket. Oh, what's his problem? <laughs> Always more than a maid, Mrs. G was so good, she eventually had two jobs and two shows. What do you mean, all you are is just a housekeeper? You're the best. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Even if you are putting tea in the coffee pot. <laughs> she was first employed by the Drummond family to cook, clean, and offer motherly advice to Arnold, Willis, and Kimberly. And they had a great bond. Gee, Mrs. Garrett, what will we ever do without you? She's right, Mrs. Garrett. We really need you. When her loyal service came to an end, she left the Drummonds to become the house mother to Natalie, Blair, Tootie, and Joe at the Eastland School for Girls. <laughs> part parent, part friend. No matter where she was, Mrs. G always had the well-being of others at heart. Thank you, girls. I am so honored. It's wonderful to be wanted, but I'm needed with my family. I have to get back with them. Number four. Moira O'Hara, American Horror Story, Murder House. It's fresh, I just made it. She came with the house, literally. How the hell do you get anything done with that thing around? When Moira was killed in the aptly named Murder House, she was doomed to wander the grounds of the estate and work for whoever owned the house forevermore. I don't wanna be here anymore! I'm frightened! I miss my mother! Oh, did we not mention the part about how she was killed for having sex with her boss? Please, I really need this job. You liked it the last time. That was a mistake. That decidedly more racy persona when greeting the men of the house. However, when she appears to her female employers, she's just a harmless old woman. I'm done playing this game! You're goddamn fired! What the hell are you doing? Number three. Tony Maselli, who's the boss? I'm Tony Maselli. I'm here about the job. Oh, I'm sorry. There must be a mistake. This job is for a housekeeper. That's me, Mr. Goodmop. <laughs> we'll admit that Tony isn't exactly the first person we'd picture as a maid. Do you, do you have any references? No. Do you have any experience? None. How many jobs have you had as a housekeeper? One, if I get this. <laughs> After all, he's a former baseball player. 
But this devoted dad is not above taking on housework if it means his daughter Samantha can get a better chance at life in idyllic suburban Connecticut, away from the mean streets of Brooklyn. Housekeeper? Uh... Angela, this is the ugliest woman I've ever seen. <laughs> hey, 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 who is this bozo? Plus, Tony's gender-reversed will-they-or-won't-they relationship with his boss, ad exec and single mother Angela Bauer is the stuff of TV legend. There's something very strange about you. Well, let's just say in another, another place in time, you know, we had, we had something very special. Besides, there's nothing sexier than a man who does windows. Number two, Rosie the Robot, The Jetsons. You've done it all, Rosie. What makes you so terrific anyway? That's my lifestyle, Mr. Jake. I'm programmed to be user-friendly. Anyone who's scared of the prospect of computers taking over the world has clearly never met Rosie. <laughs> Hang on, Mr. Jake. I've got you now, Cogswell. Model number XB500. Rosie is an outdated demo from the Urentimate company. But the Jetson family grew so fond of her almost human programming that they never bothered to upgrade. Did you hear what I said? I heard it, but my computer refuses to compute it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. All rules are off for Mother's Day. Kind, pleasant, and helpful, Rosie is a wonderful housekeeper who cooks, cleans, and just generally keeps the Jetson Skypad apartment in tip-top shape. Plus, she's close to every member of the family particularly Mr. J. Oh, I'm the biggest idiot in the universe! Well, maybe not the very biggest. Before we give our top pick a golden feather duster, here are a few honorable mentions. I'm nervous, Will. I can't live without Rosario. Please, you've got to help me out. Maybe you're better off without her. How can you say that, honey? She's I was talking to Rosario. <laughs> Hello is the word you're looking for. I am sorry, Miss Blair. I'm not talking with Vanya, and now he not stop calling, and texting, and tweeting. Ten years of my life, that's what I've given her. Ten bloody years. What did she say she'd sack you? It's obviously what he wants. So when will they tell you? When they find a replacement. Heaven for fence, she should have to put a comb through her own hair. Well, hello, you must be Mrs. Evans. I hope you didn't have any trouble finding us. Oh, no, ma'am. I heard you all the way from the bus stop. <laughs> Number one, Alice Nelson, The Brady Bunch. Mom's gonna kill us. Personally, I don't think you're gonna get off that easy. Housekeeper, cook, nanny, therapist, sass machine, Alice wore many different hats in the Brady household. Did you know very few people can keep a secret? Yeah, zippers weren't invented for lips. <laughs> Most maids would ask for a raise or threaten to quit if their boss got married and brought four extra people into the house. But our girl Alice didn't even bat an eyelash. Well, the way you were staring at me, I thought maybe I'd left my face in the other room. Smart, witty, self-sufficient, and always cool as a cucumber, Alice handled both the Bradys and her romance with a local butcher easily. A different restaurant every single night, dancing till all hours. You know, a week of this will kill me. What a way to go. <laughs> and she was always available for a sarcastic quip or a piece of friendly advice whenever anyone needed a hand. Oh, Alice, of course I know. You're like a member of our family. We all love you very much. I love all of you, too. Do you agree with our list? Which TV housekeeper is your favorite? <laughs> For more entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Don't worry. I did this room first. It's all ready for your next victim.